Hello guys and welcome to this Blade Ride video in which we take a closer look at the very much awaited prototype of Kemet Blood and Sand by Matago which is on Kickstarter right now. We are talking about the rebirth of a classic award-winning strategy game in which ancient Egyptian gods fight for dominance. Kemet is one of the most epic high-rated strategy games with dudes on a map and it was released back in 2012. Since then there has been a 1.5 version of it developed by the community on BoardGameGeek and now Matago is releasing the 2.0 improved version introducing new features, more streamlined and intuitive gameplay and new and more thematic artwork. So here is Kemet Blood and Sand where your goal is to become the most powerful god to rule over ancient Egypt. You construct your pyramids, you select the right power tiles, and already from the very start of the game you can engage in glorious battles, bringing in legendary creatures and building powerful combinations to form your strategy. To start, each player chooses a god and takes the city of their color together with their battle cards and their individual board which has a pyramid with their available actions and a tracker with the currency in the game which are the prayer points. Here is the new map of Kemet. We have the cities of each player protected by walls all around and inside them there are three districts. We also have temples, obelisks, there is the sanctuary of all gods and the Nile with military and trading harbors. We have the new divine intervention cards and depending on the player count we also have the different power tiles laid out. Without any duplicates each tile should be unique. The diamond tiles give you better control of the prayer points, the ruby ones offer more aggressive powers, while the sapphire ones give a more defensive build. And we have a new color, the onyx, which was originally not in the base game of Kemet, but in one of the expansions, gives even more ways to enhance their units and board position, and it adds to the replayability of the game. The game starts with each player having chosen two districts in their city to place five units of their troops and with a total of three levels of pyramids placed from their supply with no more than two levels into a single district. Each player chooses a level one power tile corresponding to the color of one of their pyramids and we are ready to start. Each turn in the game has two phases, the day phase and the night phase. In the day phase you can perform your actions, you use your action tokens one by one in turn order to perform the actions on the pyramid, making sure you respect the equilibrium rule, which forces you to place at least one action token in each level of the pyramid by the end of the day. When all players have resolved all of their five action tokens, then the night falls and there is a series of nine steps to be followed in which nocturnal powers are activated, new divine intervention cards are allocated and players can get victory points and prayer points if they control any of the temples and we have a new player order. In Kemet, players compete for dominance over as many rounds needed for one of the players to reach the total of 9 victory points during their turn before they can play their next action token. So let's see the actions you can do in your turn. You can pray and gain 2 prayer points, you can buy a power tile, you can move, raise your pyramid or recruit. For buying power tiles, in the final version of the game there will be tiles with the power tile colors to place here. For now I have placed the tops of the pyramids to indicate the colors. These actions allow you to buy a power tile of the same color as the pyramid you control and you have to pay the cost indicated with prayer points. With the recruit action you can recruit units in your own districts, paying one prayer point for each and never exceeding the five units per troop. This action allows you to raise your existing pyramids or raise a new one. Each level you raise costs prayer points equal to the sum of the level or levels you wish to raise the pyramid. So for example, to bring this one from level 1 to level 3, it cost me 5 prayer points. Why do you need the pyramids? Well, first of all, they allow you to buy power tiles of a matching color and that are of the same level or lower. Also, each level 4 pyramid gives one pyramid victory point to the player that controls its district. And each pyramid allows units in its district to be teleported to any space containing an obelisk by spending two prayer points. 
That's right, you can teleport your units with the power of your pyramids. And that brings us to the move action. You can move a troop either by one land move, plus any additional move from powers or divine intervention cards, or do a teleportation from your pyramid to an obelisk. In the new version, we also have two types of ports that connect with one another. The commercial ports allow you to enter or leave an area and the military ports only allow you to leave an area. Whenever your troop enters a space containing an opponent's troop, your movement action ends as you have just initiated a battle. In the battle, we have both the attacker and the defender choosing two battle cards from their hand. The first one is something like a secret sacrifice. It's discarded face down, it's never revealed and it's now out of the game. The second one will be played during the battle. Both players may hide divine intervention cards with a battle icon under their battle card. If anyone asks you, you don't have to admit whether you played intervention cards or how many, and you don't have to tell the truth either. Then both players reveal the cards and pay any costs from divine intervention cards used. The player who has the most strength wins or in case of a tie, the defender wins. They count the number of units they have in the battle, the strength value of their played battle cards, the potential strength bonus given by their power tiles, any bonus given by the creature tied to their troop in the battle, any strength bonus given by the divine intervention cards they played, and there's also a plus one for the player owning the district the battle takes place in. Each player in the battle loses as many units from their troop as the total damage value their opponent has minus their own defense value. If the attacker won and they still have a troop in the zone where the battle occurred, they gain one battle victory point. If it was the defender who won, they gain one veteran token. Either of the players, if they didn't win any victory points, then they do gain a veteran token. The loser has to retreat if the winner still has units there, but if not, they can remain where they are. Either of the players can also choose to recall their troop if they want, returning them to the supply and gaining prayer points for each unit returned minus one. And with this, there is also an exchange of power as the victory points from the pyramids are temporary, as well as the temple's victory points, meaning that they may very well change hands during the battles or the moves. The bottom line of all this is that the new Kemet's gameplay is definitely more fluid and the total experience is more immersive. The iconography is better, uh, some rules are more intuitive and the replayability is higher. Also, the minis are bigger and more detailed, the new art is gorgeous and I personally love the shift to a darker aesthetic that fits the theme of the game more and I think that overall the additions and the alterations bring the game to the epicness level that it deserves. If you want to have a look at the actual game and the Kickstarter campaign, you can go to the link in the description below for Kemet Blood and Sand. Leave me a comment to let me know what you thought of the older game, the new additions. I'd love to know what you think about it. And you can always like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.